Well, we're speaking here today with Deputy John Perry, who's the chairperson of the Arrakis Joint Committee on European Scrutiny. Deputy Perry, thank you very much for agreeing to speak to us today. Thank you very much. And I suppose I would start, Deputy Perry, by just putting a couple of questions to you, uh, starting, first of all, obviously, with the adoption of the Lisbon Treaty, which is now coming into force since the 1st of December earlier this month. I suppose I'd appreciate it if you could just point out uh, some of the ways in which you believe the Lisbon Treaty has democratised the European Union. It's very good news. I think that the whole issue of the prior to the 1st of December is what the, the uncertainty in Ireland and the whole integration within Europe and the whole harmonisation, but I think it's given very important new powers to to the European Commission are equally more important is given enhanced role to, to Dáil Aird and, and Shannon Aird and I think that the increased powers will give the issue of the responsibility where uh, simultaneously the, the documentation will leave the Commission will come into the Parliament straight away so that it gives the uh, the big difficulty up to now there was a lot of up to in, in excess of 550 directors coming into coming into in, coming into Ireland and apparently 98% of them have been transposed into Irish law, mm -hmm. and up to the uh, 2000 and I suppose 2006, there was very little scrutiny on any documentation coming into. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, they were all brought in by uh, by director, for they were coming in then by SIs as well. And I think clearly the fact of uh, the difficulty would be that um, answer your question directly. It's given a lot more uh, autonomous role to the Laird with regards to the it's holding the government to account mm -hmm. it's very much I chaired the public accounts for two and a half years and I know that it is, which was very much holding the, the government to account on how taxpayers money was spent mm -hmm. but equally the scrutiny role is equally important from the point of view it's going to hold the government to, to account how it negotiates a deal on behalf of Ireland on very important directors across a whole spectrum of society mm -hmm. in every aspect from the environment to the financial to the industrial to the uh, with this, to the educational every director that comes in mm -hmm will have a, a it affects the lives of Irish people so that I think the, the enhanced role of Dáil Éireann is given more powers to Dáil Éireann which is very important equally a greater responsibility I suppose on the commission to, to that they're now accountable because uh, so we have been fortunate since the Barroso initiative mm -hmm. since 2006 mm -hmm. uh, we have very much uh, worked on the um, I suppose in a very much pilot basis on sure. the on the issue of uh, uh, through COSAC, which as you know you're obviously aware of the COSAC, mm -hmm. uh, the, the, and I, t I attend the COSAC meetings uh, quite frequently, mm -hmm. and it, I think it's a very important body and has played a critical role. But even the Barroso initiative uh, was a very much in, in pilot. We're very much uh, clearly the, the responsibility and on the on the government here or, or on the the Parliament of Ireland because it's not necessarily on the government. This mm -hmm. uh, the, the, if you look at the the two, and even the amended 2009 Act, which now has given a clear definition on the role of the national Parliament. Mm -hmm. As, dist as distinct from the government. I think it's good news. And I suppose just turning very quickly to COSAC, which you just mentioned there, do you believe that it has a meaningful role and is Ireland's voice adequately heard in that mechanism? Uh, could you maybe describe your own experience? Well, I, I think the, the COSAC has been very effective. I think we're equally served by the uh, the, the Irish representative offices in, Brus in uh, uh, at the Parliament in Brussels. Uh, we have uh, the effectiveness of having a, a very effective uh, voice who will uh, who will work with uh, suppose his colleagues in from other countries as well, they can clearly identify it heads up the, the difficulties that are now uh, that, that, that may emerge from a mm -hmm. particular directive. But uh, the big uh, the big difficulty, I suppose, with regards to the uh, the time frame, the time frame is uh, will be an eight week t an eight week time frame. Mm -hmm. I think it's very important when you take the fifteen departments in excess of that uh, of directors coming in that the responsibility will be on the secretary general of each department here in Ireland to ensure that within the twenty day the twenty days uh, time frame that they clearly identify to the to the scrutiny committee if they feel that any of the, the commission documentation coming in has a difficulty with the issue of subsidiarity which clearly the, the definition of subsidiarity can be very vague uh, the, the description as well but it, 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 it suppose in simple language it means that any law that's been enacted in Europe is it is is, is it in breach of the is it an enactment that could have been initiated in the national parliament so that if it's a, if it's in breach of that principle where if it's not in trying to initiate or creating a law that, w that could have been created in Dáil Éireann, then it's not in breach of subsidiarity, but that's another point as well. Mm -hmm. and I suppose, I mean, you described fairly well the machinery which uh, is required to work to, to, uh, to make this mechanism do the the duty it was supposed to do, which is to democratise the union further, get more national participation on the part of parliamentarians. On the side of your committee for European scrutiny, do you believe that you're adequately resourced? I mean, you're looking, as you mentioned, at 550 directives heretofore and, per, and no doubt increasing going forward. Do you think your committee is adequately resourced and can do its job efficiently? 
Well, I must say we're very well, we're very well served. We have an, an extraordinary, a highly skilled secretariat. I think they're, they're doing us, we're, I think the public, the civil, the uh, civil service do an outstanding job here. I know from my experiences, I think they, they, they really give a huge commitment. Clearly, that is what the issue will be. We're very much on a trial basis at the moment. The big, the big, uh, the big. Um, this is with a, an agreement there on the, the December the 10th with the European Affairs Commission, uh, the committee with regards to the operation of uh, the. Um, the operation of the new empowerment given to Dáil Éireann from, from the, the December the 1st. What we're in the, during that period, with the evaluation, uh, uh, there will be an evaluation carried out to see how effective, uh, the, in the next 24 weeks, how we deal with issues. Sure. I think that when you look at the, um, the the committee that dealt with the future of Ireland, the, the commission on the uh, under uh, Senator Pascal O'Donoghue, mm-hmm. his commission on the Ireland's future role in Europe, yes. there was a many... Uh, Many, many recommendations. That was in the aftermath of the, of the defeat of the first mm-hmm. Lisbon uh, referenda. Uh, but on that issue, it's what the, and the, the, there, there are, are a number of recommendations. I think that clearly that can be looked at. I think that the 2009 Act is very clear in its mandate. Mm-hmm. There was an Oireachtas motion passed last week, they passed by the Parliament, that would give a clear definition and the responsibilities on the role of scrutiny. Our job mm-hmm. is to ensure that the documentation from, from the Parliament comes in, that it's equally important that we work very closely with the departments. And I believe that uh, when you get the commitment of the... Uh, there's a very clear commitment given by, not alone by the Scrutiny Committee, by the uh, by the by the government and by the, the Secretary-Generals of each department mm-hmm. and their responsibility. Sure. So that I think with, when you take the empowerment, but more important, I think the most important thing is that with the people of Ireland, uh, what, what we want to become, uh, the, the difficulty would be that we have to become more European in every sense how we do business because uh, when you look at the, the impact of directors coming from Europe, it's e- essential, absolutely essential mm-hmm. uh, that, uh, that there will be more debate in Shannon here, not alone just in the committee rooms. Mm-hmm. I think that uh, regrettably when it comes to Europe, there, there can be, uh, I think, one of the big issues and how people have the, the, many of the difficulties and the, the and the, the perception of our, of Europe and and the and its empowerment and its uh, impact on the citizens' lives in Ireland, it is somewhat lost. Sure. I think it's a big responsibility, a major responsibility, on the Parliament of Ireland to ensure that not alone are, would there be issues of um, directors on the subs- on the uh, on the substance that would be not necessarily in on the subsidiarity, but on the substance, a directive that it should be debated. We should have a clearly one day European day here in the Parliament in the plenary session because you can have a very effective committee within the scrutiny committee represents thirty members between Shannon here and Dolier mm-hmm. more importantly that the 166 members within the parliament is more important that they know exactly if a director is coming in because unfortunately from the from the time it hits the leads the commission and comes into the national parliament it can take a two a lead in of two years mm-hmm. in that a period of transposition. It's more important that the minister will be held to account, that parliamentarians would know what's coming, mm-hmm. that it is well debated and it's carried in the news media as well. So that that massive deficit of information, I think the obligation would be on every parliamentarian in the next year and a half to ensure that this the, that deficit is clearly established, mm-hmm. clearly put in the public domain and debated in such a way that when the director is transposed into Irish law, that this is there won't be the question of where did this come from. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think that's the right attitude and it's, that's the spirit which I think informed many of the tools uh, in, in Lisbon, in the Lisbon Treaty, and just finally, I suppose I'd like to turn to using that tool. I mean, there's much talk of the yellow card, the red card. Do you see these tools actually being used by the Oireachtas? I mean, it's one thing to talk about them, and it got an awful lot of it got some debate in the uh, during the referendum debates, both one and two. Do you think we're actually going to use this? Well, with, with the use of IPEX at the moment, I think that, you know, the, which is a very good uh, tool as well. I know that. Uh, would you mind outlining just what IPEX is, uh, please? Uh, uh, IPEX is, is it would be. Uh, um, it will be the coordinate. It will be the the body that deals with the whole coordination of all documentation that comes in from the commission, where you can make referrals from different parliaments. It, it will be very much a, a, a database system, mm-hmm. and where that it will be the whole control mechanism, very much operated through the COSEC uh, okay. facil- facilitation. Mm-hmm. But it means that clearly the fact is that I think that. Uh, uh, Killian, just from the point of view of getting this very clear, that we want to keep it. I think it's very important to keep it simple as well, mm-hmm. keep it effective. And when you and it's um, the whole level of. I genuinely believe at the moment we have nine countries who feel an issue is is of, of contentious issue. 
that it has an issue of it has an issue of, of uh, its uh, legality has an impact on concerns of nine parliaments in Europe and with the oh you see you must remember when you go to the uh, to the to the European Parliament and the, all of the representative offices which do a wonderful job and have every, mm-hmm. of every national parliament but there's very good cooperation they're very much keyed into what's going on mm-hmm. and clearly when you look at the excellent secretariat and we, and I believe at the moment when, they, when, when nine countries have a concern you know the Commission have that they, they, they're very much obliged to come back mm-hmm. and reconsider to look at the uh, to look at the proposal and maybe possibly reconsider mm-hmm. and then the red card ultimately is uh, will be the decision of the elected members of parliament and equally uh, the members of it which is a very important factor as well because mm-hmm. i didn't exclude them to, by any by any sense mm-hmm. the new mandate and the new powers given to the uh, to the european parliament and the to elected uh, and were very well served in this country having across all political parties having uh, excellent members elected mm-hmm. the members of the as the european parliament members mm-hmm. they have a huge voice in this and it, mm-hmm. and i think when you look at the right of Entitlement of members of the European Parliament to attend the scrutiny committee. Mm-hmm. I think the level of cooperation there. I'm a great believer in the uh, the dialogue, cooperation, listening, and learning. I think that when you look at the uh, the, the the possibilities here, I think mm-hmm. that it's uh, we're we're very much in the uh, transitionally the, the transitional period going forward. But I think that uh, when you when you look at the the best practices going forward, I think what people generally generally want to want uh, the outturn for this at the moment that we have good good good, good law mm-hmm. uh, that. Uh, that we have, we're part of the, uh, that we're very much, we have uh, the 98% of laws are enacted in Ireland, but it's equally important that the, the transposition of directives that would have an impact across every spectrum of society, mm-hmm. that they're well debated prior, that the, gov- that the government of the day, or uh, that the minister of the day, whichever government would be elected then, can, we can, re- can negotiate a position, mm-hmm. and that will, that will, will certainly re- reflect, re- reflect the views of the elected members of Dáil mm-hmm. and Shannon Yard. I think that will, it's a very good safeguard. I think it's very good for, uh, I, I think that it's a, a it's, it's the whole simplification and the operation and of the union and through, and as for the fact that we had the Barossa initiatives since 2006 mm-hmm. and we operated five in a pilot basis, which is very successful. We operated five uh, test cases on the issue of uh, subsidiarity very successfully, I may add. And we got a, I think that learning curve has very much left us in a very competent position to deal sure. very effectively with the, with the responsibility that's given out to the scrutiny committee. I very much feel I look forward to the challenges with the, uh, with the, with the test. But more importantly, in, in the next six months, I would be very determined that we'll get a, as much debate here. Mm-hmm within the parliament and equally more important i've said it in time again i think that we need a more a more we need more european um european information here in the parliament mm-hmm. i think that is an issue that i feel very we have a very effective european office here it's but it's removed from the parliament structure here sure. and we have a huge amount of people coming in here to dolly Ireland, i would say from every age every age but, but especially younger people mm-hmm. uh, uh, from second level third level universities and all coming here visiting dolly Ireland. Mm-hmm. i think that uh, clearly what we need to have a more uh, european Presence here in Dolir with your with more information on Europe, more more information explaining the role of uh, of the scrutiny committee and the mm-hmm. European Affairs Committee and the work and the responsibilities because it's all what we need to do is it's a learning curve, mm-hmm. and I think that a medium like this is very important to explain very simply. Our job is was very simply is to hold the government to account mm-hmm. uh, on the documentation coming from Europe that we check it. Uh, we bring invested interests, private int- uh, It's not necessarily talking to politicians. Mm-hmm. We bring people in from the banking industry, bring people in from the health service sector. Mm-hmm people from the business sector, how this director will impact on their lives. Mm-hmm. And I believe that you're dealing with a, a, the whole bureaucratic nightmare that was there in many ways in Europe. It's, it's, it's getting, we want to keep it more effective, more simple, that people understand clearly where we're coming from. So I think that you know, all of that, taking that on board, and with people who are practically minded politicians who feel, uh, and debating issues, it, 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 can, it can only enhance the whole democratic deficit mm-hmm. and improve democracy in Europe, make Europe more accountable, and make Irish people feel part of the European that they feel they're equally they can now contribute mm-hmm. to European legislation at his, uh, at the very embryonic stage which is very important Okay well Deputy Perry thank you very much for outlining the work thank of your committee much. and I wish you the best of luck Thank you very much